Tate is going to be starting. What did you see from him in uh, his game on Sunday, his debut? I saw a winning performance. I thought he played really well. I thought operated the offense, did exactly what Luke's asking him to do, and uh, I thought he played with a lot of confidence. You could see as the game went on, he played with more and more confidence and made more and more plays as the game went on, and um, they operated their offense. I mean, they, they did not keep anything simple for him. Uh, I feel like they ran the, the offense that they believe in, and um, again, it was a winning performance. As you worked your way through your coaching career, you've, you know, at the lower levels, you've come across a lot of you know, D2 guys or so. When you see a guy in D2 make it to the show, I mean, it's pretty odd. What do you, what do you say about that? Well, I think at the quarterback position, that position itself is, um, you know, tough to make it in the NFL. But I think it just shows you that there's that old saying that if you're good enough, the NFL will find you. And this guy's one of the most decorated college players, regardless of the level. I mean, he was a record-setting quarterback and, and accomplished a lot as a quarterback. And I mean, uh, was a Senior Bowl participant, um, which is the you know the most prestigious college all-star game. So. Uh, you know, he had a tremendous college career. We did a lot of work on him, and, and you saw why in his first game. And I thought he came in the Minnesota game and, and played a quality game, too, and gave their team a chance to win in that game. Uh, and then in the preseason, um, you know, certainly he had to beat a lot of people out to become, you know, the second quarterback for Chicago. So uh, he has our full respect. What's the difference in preparing for a quarterback like that who's only played in one NFL game versus, like, a Justin Fields? Well, I just think you have a little bit more inventory, about a bigger body of work uh, on the player. But uh, to, to see him have a full start against a quality team, a team kind of that we know, I think gives you a sense of uh, the menu that they're willing to give him. And uh, then I think you get a really good sense of just his overall ability, his athleticism and pocket presence, arm strength, all that good stuff. So, uh, again, you know, Bridget, a big win on the road, you know, a big win for them, um, you know, at home. Uh, versus the Raiders, and, and the Raiders were coming off that big win. So, I mean, it was a team that, you know, was, was playing well. So, for them to play like that, um, you know, again, it was a winning performance for him. So, the injury for uh, Josh Palmer, was that something from the game that sort of popped up Monday? Yes. Okay. Yeah. In terms of that, you, yeah, you said on Monday you'd have more info today? No, or just full participant, full, uh, full participant in practice today. Any, any Do you thought? expect Josh to miss all week? I don't know that day-to-day kind of thing. We'll know we'll know more as the week goes on. In terms of that inventory with Bajit, how much do you go back to maybe that senior bull tape and some stuff from Shepard that maybe in terms of the athleticism and stuff he hasn't showed yet or maybe other concepts? Yeah, I think our, our college uh, scouting department, our pro personnel department, do a great job in the advances of, of making us aware of all that. And then, you know, certainly I did the work on the quarterbacks coming out. So, you know, we have a good idea of, of his ability and, but, you're, you know, you're really getting to see him in, in pro football. You know, so I think the preseason games and then the two games he's played in, that's going to give you the, the truest measurement of who he is and, and what he's capable of. So um, he's off to a good start for them. In terms of the scouting, were you guys looking at him as possibly a late round or college free agent? Yeah, just you're, you're taking a look at all the quarterbacks. And then even if you're looking at other positions, you know, you're seeing him, um, you know, at the Senior Bowl, whether it's one-on-ones or the seven-on-sevens or the actual team reps. So, um, you know, you just you go back to what you saw back then. And then uh, his performances so far in the, the NFL have really, I think, you know, you see a player that belongs, you know, that's good enough to play quarterback in the NFL. Sticking to your game plan versus making adjustments during the game, whether that's at halftime or after a drive or whatever it is. Yeah, Bridget. I mean, it's game to game. You know, it's series to series. You know, sometimes there's adjustments that happen. Um, you know, within a series when you go to the bench. There's sometimes where it can happen during a play call where I'm giving K9 a, a reminder to let the guys know you can make an adjustment that quick where it's happening like truly in the moment. Uh, and then there's sometimes where you go in at halftime and you you have time to make some. But every every case is different. Um, but I just think that you know when you need to or you feel like it's going to give you an advantage, you want to be able to communicate it and hopefully get it done. Um, and I thought that our guys, uh, you know, since I've been here, we've had to do that you know throughout my time here and in all those instances that I mentioned. And that's what that's what good teams do. Is there just real quick following up on that? Is there like uh, you want to say discipline to the game plan, or are there situations where something might happen and you your instinct is to want to make an adjustment, but then you say, well, let's just stick with the game plan and then maybe make those adjustments later? Yeah, I think you know you have you have uh, 
chapters in your game plan that maybe you have ready. You don't know if you're going to get to, you know, need them, if you're going to need them, or you're, you don't know if you're going to be able to use them, whether it's like health or, you know, uh, personnel oriented. Uh, but, you know, I think once the game starts, you have a, you have a pretty strong sense of what you need to do and how you need to do it. And that's what you got to be able to do though with your guys is be able to communicate it clearly so that they can go operate and, you got to trust that, you know, hey, every day we operate like this. Every day we're making adjustments, not just at the game. And so um, our guys, you know, we're a close group uh, in all three phases. And I think we've had to do that in all three phases of our team so far this year. Trey McKinney was inactive Sunday. Um, we get to ask you about it on Monday. But just where, where is he sort of at? What do you need to see from him to bring to get you know, being an option for you guys on game? Yeah, Daniel, it was one of those, I think, more um, reflective of the type of game that it was. Uh, we're pleased with Trey. I think he's made big progress on special teams with Ryan. Uh, and he just needs to stay on track. This week in practice? Uh, Chris, day to day. Yeah. Uh, how are you, personally, how are you holding up? It's been a season of expectations, disappointment, tough losses, a lot of chatter going on out there. How are you dealing with it? How are you doing? You know, like a competitor. I mean, you 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 know, you got to make sure that you start with yourself and take full responsibility. And um, you know, I haven't done a good enough job. Um, you know, with that said, we're six games into it, and we've got 11 left for sure. And that's what we need to focus on um, is what's in front of us, not what's behind us. And uh, I thought we had a good practice today. It was fresh. It was focused. And um, guys had the right mindset. Um, you know, the NFL is about making adjustments and. You know, there's going to be a, you know, a stretch like this at some point in your season. What I've learned is that, you know, every time that you go, you know, start an NFL season or, you know, head towards one, there's going to be a point where you need to make adjustments. And uh, we're at a point right now where we have to perform better. Um, but it really starts in practice. And, you know, I like what I saw out there today. How do you feel like Will Clapp has done since taking over from Purdy? Yeah, you know, Daniel, I think just he's a consistent player. Uh, is really has command of the game plan, uh, communicates really well, and, you know, he's as tough as they come. And so I think when you're talking about a backup center, he's given us winning play uh, and given us a chance to compete. You know, these have been two close games against two really good fronts. You're talking about, you know, Chris Jones and that group of guys, inside players, and then Dallas that's got a bunch of quality inside guys. And, you know, we're right there at the end of the game with a chance to win. And that's what you want from your backup is that he gives you a chance to, you know, to win every game. And that's what Will does for us. He's a stud. Protection. Go ahead. How would you evaluate the offensive line as a whole in these last two games? Um, you know, we, we haven't been consistent enough. I think we've, you know, in the last game, I was really, I, I liked the way we responded in the run game. Uh, I felt like we had a quality run game performance, and I felt like it was definitely good enough for us to win the game. Uh, we were explosive in the run game uh, and thought, thought our guys came off the ball. But, um, you know, the second half, uh, you know, I thought we faded a little bit in that, that phase. But... Uh, you know, this line's going to continue to get better. There's a lot of young guys on, on, in that group, as you know, three really young ones. And, um, you know, Trey and Will being, you know, the, the older guys. But uh, the, the more that group plays together, the better it's going to get. Um, but we like coaching that group. In terms of the protection issues the past couple of games, how much of it is coverage? Um, you've faced a lot of teams that the blitz rates are increased. I mean, Minnesota, Strudel Roof, Chicago. Sorry, Kansas City yep. got the second highest of blitz rate yep. from year to year. Just how much of it is a combination? It's a combination, uh, like you said, Joe. It, it, it usually is, not always, but it usually is. And um, you know, pressure percentage, and then you know, the outcome. Those two things are different. But we we know that um, this year, when we've run the football, uh, is when we've had our chance to be most explosive. Um, and so I think the more consistent we are running the football, the more. Um, you know, balance it creates. And then, um, you know, I think in the passing game, you know, anytime you're in a known passing situation against a team who can rush or pressure blitz, uh, you know, there's, it's going to be tough in the NFL. And so um, that's why, you know, on first and second down, you got to continue to stay ahead, be explosive, stay out of third down and known pass where, you know, that, that pressure can be tough. How long ago the Bears lost 14 straight? I'm not saying they've turned it around, but they seem to be playing a bit better. When you look at them during that losing a few weeks back during the losing, do you notice anything that stands out? Well, they're playing really hard. They played really hard the whole way. That's what I, I see. Um, that's a team that consistently plays hard. They made a lot of big additions to their team in the offseason, free agency wise. And I think, you know, trading for DJ Moore, and um, I think they've drafted a lot of really good players. And 
Uh, they've handled the, you know, the, the injury to Justin, I think, well. It's, it's difficult to overcome you know, losing your quarterback. And I think um, they've, they've showed, uh, I think, really good resilience. Um, but their games have all been close you know, to me. Like when I watch them play, their, their record could be much different. Um, but I think the consistency of how hard they play, I think they're trying to play the game the right way. I think offensively, you know, they're one of the top rushing attacks in the league. Um, they rushed for 170 yards without Justin as their quarterback last week. So they've run the football at a high level. On defense, they attack the ball. Um, they're, you know, they pursue the ball at a high level. They attack the ball at the high level. Um, and so, and they're dangerous on special teams because they have a lot of good returners. They have a lot of guys who are dangerous with the ball in their hands. So, you know, I see a really good football team, and I think that's what the tape shows. Um, and then now they've been able to win a few games and get that confidence. Got the trade deadline coming up here in about a week. How, how active do you expect to be at all in terms of looking around and trying to improve their roster? Just like every season, you know, we'll, we'll be there with the other 31 teams trying to do what's best for our team. You got your I'll start in Chicago. I think college coaching career too in Northern, yeah. in that area. Just how fondly do you look back at your time with the Bears and getting your NFL start there? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll cherish my, my time in Chicago. Um, I'll always be grateful to the McCaskey family. Uh, George and Barb were great to my wife and I, and uh, Ted Phillips. Um, you know, I couldn't be more grateful for them for giving me an opportunity as a as a young college coach. And you know, we accomplished a lot there. I think when we won the division in 2018. Uh, they hadn't done that in a long time, and that was a special year. Uh, we didn't get off to a good start that year, you know. Um, it was a tough start to that year, as a matter of fact, but um, that was a special group of guys, and uh, we accomplished a lot, you know, number one defense, and, you know, that, were, that was a special group of players and coaches, and, and the ownership, you know, meant a lot to me. Emotions, you know, facing a former team, you know, like again, like Hello Mac, for an example. Uh, how do you control those emotions and not let that kind of take over what's at stake? You just got to focus what's on the field. You know, what's off the field, that's kind of for everybody else. You know, your focus is uh, competitors, what's on the field. And, um, you know, that, that football team has our full attention, you know, getting ready for their players. And they've got so many good ones. So um, it's going to be a tough game Sunday night.